I don't think I need to tell you that it's been a big month for South Africa's vaccine rollout. And also, August is a big month as well. Government says it will offer more jabs over the weekend. The, that should give the numbers a boost. It could also save thousands of lives in the long run. Let's get you up to speed with the numbers and what they mean uh, with ENCA's Michael Marilia, who joins me now. So, Michael, if the analogy being used is that vaccines are a bit like a pandemic parachute, I imagine then that this boost in weekend vaccination should give us an even softer landing. Yeah, absolutely, Tulis. If you look at the rate at which we've managed to increase the rollout over the last, say, two months or so, those weekend rollouts will give us an extra two days of uh, really strong numbers which we can add to uh, the overall program. I want to focus very quickly on the uh, numbers as uh, we get started. This is total doses since the mass vaccination program actually uh, began. And we're going to look at how long it took us to go from 1 million to 2 million, from 2 million to 3 million, and so on and so forth. So at the beginning, Tullis, we got to uh, 1 million doses at uh, the 28th of May, so at the end of May. Then uh, to get to 2 million, that was the 15th of June, so around about 18 days. But look at how we've managed to ramp it up. At the beginning of July, it was taking us about eight days to get uh, an extra million doses. So we reached four million on the 8th of July, five million on the 16th of July. And the good news out of all of this, Tulis, is we're, we're right now down to about six days per million additional doses. So from the 16th to the 22nd of July, we added a million and the same again from the 22nd to the 28th. So just six days to add a million doses. We're now approaching eight million doses in total. Hopefully that weekend rollout will keep increasing those numbers steadily as we try to reach 35 million by Christmas. Yeah, so the speedometer is really on there. You can see that the, yeah. the, the pace is picking up what with the president setting a target of 300,000 yeah. vaccinations a day. And that's just in the public sector uh, and the public sector talking about how close they are to reaching that 300,000. And in fact, they're thinking that they can even surpass that, not to mention what's happening in the private sector as well. Uh, did I say public sector or did I get the two confused? Anyway. Uh, I'm of a particular age. <laughs> Speaking of age, Michael, yeah. you've also been looking at the risk profile in the various age groups, yeah. um, comparing when someone of a particular age is vaccinated and when they are not vaccinated. Yeah. What's, what's emerging from that data? Well, let's take you through those numbers and uh, you can reveal to the country which age group you fall into. This is well, let's uh, take a look at our parachutes. This is data from the United Kingdom. They've obviously uh, come close to fully vaccinating you know, most of their population. So we have a good comparison here when it comes to those who haven't been vaccinated and those who have. I'm going to focus on some of the youngsters first. The 30-year-olds, to this is where pre-vaccination, a risk of fatality when it comes to COVID of one thousandth of a percent. So because they're young, their risk isn't so bad. Take a look at what happens when they get the vaccine. It drops to a risk of one ten thousandth of a percent in terms of dying. So a tiny fraction when it comes to the actual risk. Let's look quickly at the 40-year-olds uh, and above. Again, to this is where they have roughly about a hundredth of a percent risk factor when it comes to dying from COVID-19. They get the vax, it drops down to a thousandth of a percent. Now let's take a look at the 50-year-olds uh, very quickly. So a 50-year-old uh, unvaccinated, to this is where about a tenth of a percent chance of dying from COVID-19. When they get vaccinated, it takes them down to 35-year-olds, effectively. The same risk as a 35-year-old who hasn't been vaccinated. So the key thing here, the vaccine takes a lot of the risk associated with age out of the equation. So we've gone from a 50-year-old, effectively, to a 35-year-old in terms of the age risk. And I want to finish with the 60-year-olds very quickly, just to bring it home to Lissies, where it effectively takes 20 years off when it comes to the risk. So a 60-year-old who gets vaccinated effectively becomes a 40-year-old 
who hasn't been vaccinated. That shows you what the vaccine can do. Uh, the, the study, obviously, from the United Kingdom, but the principle remains the same for South Africa. Yeah, um, it's one way to, res to reverse the clock, isn't it? Absolutely. In terms of just how, um, how likely you are to die from COVID-19. Yep. So interesting data there, uh, that you're sharing. That's ENCA's Michael Marilia there, uh, giving you a sense of those numbers and what they mean in the battle against COVID-19.